So we're going to go ahead and start our next project, which we will be calling the breakfast scene. I've given you a few models to get started, and then I'm gonna show you how to make a couple of others as well. So first things first, let's go ahead and set our project to the new folder, which you should have downloaded from D2L already. So we'll go to File, Set Project, and I currently have this breakfast folder on my desktop. And I'll hit Set. Now I'll go to File, Open Scene, and you should have a folder called Base Models. If I open that, you'll see that I have a couple of objects in here already for you to start with. I have a tabletop. I have some legs for the table. I have a spoon, a bowl, and an empty cereal box. In the next few videos, we're going to look at how to create a couple of more models for our scene just to help fill it up and make it feel more lived in. So the first thing, I'm going to go ahead and add all of these models to a new layer so I can hide them. I'm going to select everything except maybe the tabletop and assign those to a new layer. I'll call this layer models and I'll hit save. And what this will allow me to do is hide and unhide the other elements while I'm modeling. Now over the next few videos we're going to talk about a couple of different modeling techniques. The first of these is just a simple polygon modeling technique that we're going to use to create a milk carton. So let's look at some milk cartons for reference. So as you see, we have sort of a tall rectangular box that tapers in with the flap at the top, and we have this indention in the side where the box has been folded in in order to make this top part. Depending on when the milk carton was created, some of the newer versions have a little lid along the side, whereas the older ones you had to unfold to pour out the top like this. So I'm going to keep this page open on another screen, just as my temporary reference to look at. Now I want my milk carton to be a similar proportion to what I have going on on the rest of my table. I don't want an enormous milk carton and a little bitty tiny spoon. It all needs to seem like it lives in the same world. So I'll create a box. And I'll go ahead and start scaling this box to get it close to the correct scale. I'm going to go for the half gallon size. So maybe something like this and this. Can maybe even make it a little bit wider. That looks good. Now when creating a polygon model, we need to know which shape we want to start with. I chose a cube because for the most part, a milk carton is a cube. There is a triangular shape on the top, but it wouldn't make sense to start with something like a cone. Um, the first thing you need to do is just sort of think of what is going to get you closest to that overall shape. And then we can start making changes to this polygon model to refine the details. So in order to get this top part where we have the folded in triangle shapes at the top, I'm going to do that just by adding some more information to my model. Under the input, I'm going to add some additional height spans. I'm just going to go for two right now. And I'll also do an additional width and depth span just so I have a dividing point for the center line. Now when I inserted these edges for the height spans, it put them evenly distributed throughout the middle of the object. But that's not necessarily where I need the most amount of information. So I'm going to right click and go to edges and then double click on this edge in order to select the entire edge loop. And now I'm gonna push this up all the way to the top of my model. 
I'm going to use this to create the little flattened tab at the top. Now I'll double click on this edge and raise it up a little over three quarters. Maybe about there. Now the reason I did this is because now I have enough information in order to start creating that triangle shape on the top and still keep my flat tab. If I right click and choose vertex and select all of these vertices along the top, I can scale this inward in the X axis to start getting the flattened tab. Again, I'm going to continually refer back to my reference to make sure I'm keeping this appropriately scaled and proportioned. So for me, maybe this needs to go just a little bit higher. Now the next part of the milk carton that's kind of difficult to create is this indention in the side. So I want to be able to retain a little bit of the thickness of this box along the edge. And at the same time, I need to be able to extrude inward in order to make this indention. So, Let's choose these little triangle faces on the side. Now, this is something that is going to happen on both sides of the box. So this is where I can use symmetry to help me save some time. I'll choose symmetry. And since we're trying to mirror across the object's Z axis, I'll choose object Z. Depending on how you have your box oriented in your scene, you may have to choose a different option. Now, if I choose these triangles again, you'll see that it's automatically choosing the mirrored side of the object. Now, in order to keep some of that thickness to this flap, I'm going to extrude and just scale the object inward a little bit. So if I hit Control E and click on the scale box in the center, it will scale my object inward. I can also just hit R and scale it inward manually as well. Now that gives us a little bit of thickness along the edge. Now I'm going to hit Control E again, and I'm going to start extruding inward in my box. Once I've gone in so deep, I'll just go ahead and hit R. So now I can scale this down to a much tinier shape and move it upward to get an approximation of what the box would actually look like. So this is looking pretty good. Some of you, however, are going to select the box and hit three to try to smooth off some of these sharp edges. The thing you'll notice is that that no longer looks like a milk carton. The reason for that is we do not have a lot of polygons on this model in order to retain this shape. So if we do want to smooth this object to get a little bit of a highlight along the edges, so if we want to be able to smooth this object and get a more beveled edge, we can do that by starting to insert some additional edge loops. I'm going to go to Mesh Tools and Insert Edge Loop. And I'll start inserting edge loops in the places that I want to retain the shape. So for example, I want to be able to retain a relatively sharp edge along the bottom. And now if I hit three, you'll see that it's a little sharper along the bottom. I also want to maintain a relatively sharp edge along this top of the flap as well. Some areas where we're going to run into issues is this rounding of the side of the box. So if I insert an additional edge loop here, you'll see I get one on the mirrored side as well. And that will help us retain a little bit of that sharpness on the side. Our box is starting to taper in here a little bit, so I could add an additional edge loop here as well. And I could consider adding one here as well. Let's see what that looks like. So now our milk carton is kind of maintaining the right shape. I'll go ahead and hit W to go back to my move tool. 
And I can make some small adjustments in order to make this a little better, such as maybe grabbing these faces and scaling them inward to have a little bit more depth there. I also feel like maybe I could have another edge loop along the top here as well. So mesh tools, insert edge loop. And so now that's looking a little bit better. I'll hit W one more time. And one of the things I notice is that sometimes this part of the milk carton is just a little bit more narrow, something like this.